es del Colo Colo de Chile y manda cuatro jugadores eh, para reforzar el nuevo equipo. Y mm. ese es el único momento, vamos en 43 años, que no he visto eh, una, no un sentimiento de hostilidad ni de rencía, sino sorpresivo y realmente de profunda integración y agradecimiento. Mm. Esta relación entre Alianza y Colo Colo se mantiene al punto que las protestas estudiantiles de hace tres o cuatro años, eh, la barra de Colo Colo salía a las calles a protestar y la barra de Alianza hizo un comunicado defendiendo mm. las protestas y su interesantísimo lo que pasó y lo que pasa entre esos dos equipos hasta mm. ahora. Y creo que vale la pena pensarlo también como una coda, de la, como, una coda como un dato de mm. la conclusión de la investigación. ¿no? So, yes, yeah, so, uh, thank you very much. So, um, yes, sport and music, and, and within sport, football in particular, can be, these, uh, can be other possible sites of encounter mm -hmm. no, to investigate. And maybe it also takes us beyond... Um, what in some ways seems a rather elite group of people when mm. we talk about the writers like Cero Alegría mm. and so forth. But that's, um, that's really interesting, especially with football, because you often think of football championing nationalism, don't mm. you? And, and so here's a moment of them coming mm. together. Sí, muy interesante. The other side of the camp, oh, sorry. Good. That might be interesting is, is religious encounter. Yes. Mm. Um, and the church, uh, yeah. I'd say the struggle inside of the Catholic Church to yeah. define what uh, Catholicism will mean in the 1960s and 1970s. There are all kinds of uh, encounters there, and I do recall the, the case of uh, the priest Bolva in, in Chile, who was in Lima at the time of the coup, in, in the middle of one of these encounters, and comes back to Chile. There's a there's a circulation and networking there that is not just about uh, national. Sí. 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 Y, du y con una larga historia, no, no solo ahora. Yeah, thank you very much for a great question. Um, I'm, I'm a little, uh, well, I'm, I'm more curious than anything else about the fact that you've chosen Gabriela Mistral, who is among all um, Chilean intellectuals, one of the most um, transnational mm -hmm. you know, Pan-American thinkers. And the aprista, uh, the apristas in exile, who are by definition also very uh, transnational, trans-American. Um, but I wonder if there are other intellectuals who yeah. are crossing the border in one yeah. or another direction, who are a little bit more ambiguous mm. uh, uh, as to that relationship and are, are a little less yes. willing to embrace, embrace each other. And perhaps there are gray zones there mm. of conflict as, as well as areas of um, encounter? Yes. Yes, definitely. And I, I mean, this is really kind of the tip of the iceberg in some ways. And I've t chosen kind of, I've started off with certain kind of iconic figures on whom we have a great deal of material. Um, but yes, I obviously want to go much beyond people like Gabriela Mistral and go beyond the Aprista exile community in Peru um, and to look at other intellectuals too and I guess yeah it will just it happen through time as I spend so this is a very new project but as I spend more time on it but yes I'm, I'm aware of that that these are certain key emblematic figures and there are um, probably many more who are slightly like more grey like you say more ambiguous To go more toward the official state-centered mm. perspective for just a moment, I'm wondering if you're at all considering the extent to which um, indigenismos in the two countries have been constructed in very different ways. 
Um, I mean, yes. I think it's, it's really important mm -hmm. to point out that your, your book on the Mapuche in modern Chile, I think, is one of the first books that really systematically mm -hmm. analyzes the existence of a long-term mm -hmm. official form of indigenismo mm -hmm. in Chile in terms of, you know, the national government and the presidential policy mm -hmm. being connected to specific elite Mapuche intellectuals, mm -hmm. and that there is also a connection to socialism. Mm -hmm. and to the notion yeah, yeah. that yeah. somehow through socialism we need to bring in all the Americanos, right? <clears throat> and I just, my understanding of, of Peruvian history is that that is really not mm -hmm. an official indigenismo in Peru. Yeah. So, so I'm wondering if you mm -hmm. have an indigenismo like that in Chile, mm -hmm. right? But you have in Peru an indigenismo that is maybe more bottom up some ways, although obviously a lot of intellectuals yeah. are part of that. Mm. So mm. Um, how would that, do, do you mm. think that can have an effect on the way in which you understand this notion of um, indigenous mm. uh, discourses or indigenista discourses and the mm. exchange between the two societies? Yes. I get, yeah, I have to. I have to kind of process yes. <laughs> what you were say, saying there and think about it some more. Um, but I think you're right, it's important to take on board the very different contexts in which indigenismo is developed in both countries. Um, like you said, in Chile, it can, it can sometimes seem far more top down, um, particularly when you get to Allende's government, although that's also in dialogue with. Mapuche organizations, isn't it? And yes, and, and I'm sorry to jump back yeah. to this bit of a discussion. We've been having this for days. Um, but, you know, the whole notion also of the fact that there are a lot of Mapuche members in the Communist Party. Party yes. So, yeah. so these are the kinds yeah. of things that to me are fascinating mm. about your project, mm. which is how do we both yeah. compare mm. but also contrast these different yes. Yeah. right? And in Chile, Peru, it happens much earlier, doesn't it? But it's also, um, there seems to be, I don't know, I don't know if this is too, there seems to be many more diverse strains of indigenismo in Peru as well um, in the early 20th century. And where you read, you know, there is an official indigenismo, a state-sponsored indigenismo under Leguía, under, under Augusto Leguía, but there's also various very radical indigenismos. And, you could, and, to, and to talk about indigenistas, you could t take Luis um, Valcarcel, I'm not sure if I pronounced his name, his surname there right, correctly, um, or you could take José Carlos Mariátegui, they're very different forms, very different indigenista discourses, aren't they? So it does, it does seem in Peru that there's a greater diversity of confli uh, often conflicting indigenismos. So actually we need to talk about indigenismos, don't we, rather than indigenismo. There's not just one. But yes, I need to think about that more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, about 30 years ago, I think it was, when I was in Chile, they, they had just started a program among the Mapuche to, for bilingual education and uh, training teachers. I met a couple of teachers that were very excited about it. I, and, uh, and then when I traveled to northeastern Peru, I found out that something similar was going on there with museums, et cetera, not, not Quechua and not, and not Mapuche. So I'm just wondering, today, what, how has that evolved? Is, is uh, I heard about some territorial conflicts between the Mapuche and the government, mm. but uh, this resurgency of culture, which I think is a fascinating thing to uh, investigate, uh, how, how is it uh, progressing? Um, okay, uh, we were talking about this in your class, weren't we, Becky? Um, I think, so there is a bilingual education program, an intercultural education program in Chile, um, a government-sponsored intercultural bilingual education program from, I think, 1996 officially with a curricular reform under Frey. Um, most of the studies that I've read um, and this isn't my particular period, no, but most of the studies that I've read tend to highlight the very limited nature of that bilingual education. And it's quite tokenistic. Um, it's only in certain areas. It's not about educating Chileans about 
uh, across Chile about um, the intercultural realities or the multicultural realities of Chile. You know, it's certain areas where there's a high proportion of Mapuche students. Um, there also seems to be a sense, like I said, it's very tokenistic. Maybe you learn a few words in Mapudungun. Um, but having said at the same time, I think that the fact that there's legislation on it, that there's something on paper, that there's something in the policy, however limited that is in some ways. People can, groups, organizations, individuals can take, um, can take advantage of that official willingness, if you like, and do some quite exciting things. So I, I don't have any specific examples to give off the top of my head, but my sense is, particularly with some of the students that are, that are coming out of the Universidad Católica in Villarica and the training program that they have there um, for Mapudungun, I think there are some really interesting initiatives. What I don't think is, I just don't feel like they come from the, the state. I think it depends on certain individuals and certain organisations taking the initiative. So I think there's some. I think there are some positive thing, positive experiences, po some really interesting projects. But I don't see that as something that's kind of spread across the board. Um, all that's net, and it, it seems to depend on certain people. Thank you, Joanna, for a terrific uh, talk. Thank you very much. Best luck on the project. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs>
uh, where in the world is the, uh, the UN? Uh, the, and uh, I've chosen uh, the, uh, a few things to uh, talk about. Uh, the first, uh, because it's the month of March, and uh, uh, the, much of the world celebrates International Women's Day much more vigorously than the United States does. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the UN also is very involved in trying to promote uh, sort of an equal chance for women in the world. And one of their programs where they're working with other women's organizations is to help women get young women get opportunities to be trained in science and technology to help improve their economic possibilities and their professional responsibility. Uh, professional opportunities in their life. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the second thing that we hear in the news a lot is uh, uh, negotiations with Iran about uh, uh, their nuclear program and the UN's uh, International Agency on uh, Atomic Energy is very much involved in those organizations. They provide the expertise to know what uh, works and what doesn't work as far as monitoring. So we can applaud the work of the UN in uh, uh, helping to provide expertise in those negotiations. Then our program tonight will be on uh, uh, about Sierra Leone. So uh, that is where uh, the, this month uh, the activity of the UN is. And uh, uh, when I look to see what has the UN been doing in, in uh, Sierra Leone, uh, the, I see that this is an anniversary month. One year ago, uh, the, uh, in just it'll be a year in just a few days, uh, the, the uh, Secretary of the General of the UN was in Sierra Leone to help uh, say goodbye and congratulations to the 17,000 uh, UN peacekeeping force that had been there uh, for ten for the past uh, 17 years, help bringing peace after uh, uh, many years of warring in uh, Sierra Leone. And in the latter years of their time there, they spent a lot of time helping to build infrastructure, and they've been replaced now by the uh, United Nations Development Program. Uh, they have 23 different projects in Sierra Leone. They're spending about $16 million a year. About half that money comes from the UN itself, from the countries that make contributions to the, to the UN. But the other uh, the big funders are uh, the uh, British DFID, the, their uh, program for that's like our USAID, and the, the uh, country of, uh, uh, of Ireland, and Netherlands, and, uh, and uh, I forgot the other one. Netherlands and Norway. And uh, uh, so they are, in addition to what they contribute to the UN, they're also contributing to these 23 projects for trying to improve life in uh, Sierra Leone. Uh, the Sierra Leone in its uh, uh, sort of global health index ranks fifth out of the 170 some countries that get rated. So there's a long ways to go, but uh, we can be proud that the UN is there. So now I want to leave it for our uh, speaker to tell more about uh, Sierra Leone, and uh, 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 Helen Finlay will introduce our speaker. Larry, when you said library, do you mean the library here or the main library? The public library, library. What? yeah. The downtown public library. Downtown library. public library. Mm -hmm. Well, as I look around, it sends the excitement everybody has about going to, that we're going to hear from Mark, and I realize that many people already know him. You may already know what I'm going to say in this introduction, but for a few people who may not know that much about Mark, uh, these are some of the bits of information about him. He's a Madison nurse with many years of experience working with national and international solidarity organizations. He began working in El Salvador in 1980, and he helped found the Madison Archetile City, City, Sister City Project in 1986. He is also a founding member of the Madison Rafa Sister City Project. He likes sister cities, I think, and we do too. In addition, he teaches courses at Edgewood College and UW. La integración y agradecimiento. Esta relación entre alianza y Colo Colo se mantiene 
al punto que las protestas estudiantiles de hace de tres o cuatro años, eh, la barra del Colo Colo salía a las calles a protestar y la barra de Alianza hizo un comunicado defendiendo mm. las protestas. Eso es interesantísimo lo que pasó. Possible sites of encounter, mm. no, to investigate, and maybe it also takes us beyond um, what, in some ways, seems a rather elite group of people when we talk about the writers like Cero Alegría mm. and so forth. But that's um, that's really interesting, especially with football, because you often think of football championing nationalism, don't you? And and so here's a moment. Lo que pasa entre esos dos equipos hasta mm. ahora, y creo que vale la pena pensarlo también como una coda de la como una coda como un dato de la conclusión de la investigación no so yes yeah, so, uh, thank you very much so, um, yes sport and music and, and within sport football in particular can be en el Colo Colo de Chile y manda cuatro jugadores eh, para reforzar el nuevo equipo y mm. ese es el único momento, digamos, en mis 43 años, que no he visto eh, una, no un sentimiento de hostilidad ni de rencía, sino sorpresivo y realmente de profunda. One of them coming together. Sí, muy interesante. Yes. Uh, And the church. Uh, yeah. I'd say the struggle inside of the Catholic Church to yeah. define what uh, Catholicism will mean in the 1960s and 1970s. There are all kinds of 